Hello, photography friends. Eugene Nagavieski here with Enphoto, about to start up our next live segment. Super excited to bring this one to you. Different time. We have a special guest to you today, all the way from Melbourne, Australia. We're going to let some people filter uh, in here. Just take a minute or two for the courtesy of people arriving maybe a little bit late. Again, maybe they forgot about the different time, but we are ready to roll. If you're watching, go ahead and let us know that you are here in the comments and go ahead and let us know where you're tuning in from. That's also something we would love to know. Um, we have a few people coming in. Today, we're going to be talking to Jay Long, a master wedding photographer. He's going to let us know all about how to better your wedding photography business, how to sell those albums and print products, and do yourself a favor with your photography business. Hi, Jay. I see, I see from Mihao at Enfoto. <laughs> all right. I think we've waited enough. I see some people coming in. Let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, here we are today, super excited to bring to you our guest all the way from Melbourne, Australia, Jay Long. Hello, Jay. How are you doing today? Good, man. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you too. How are things in Australia right now? Everything's okay? Everything's good. You can't complain. I think everything's good. All right. Now, before we jump into the interview questions, how about you just tell us a little bit about yourself, Jay, and where people can find out more about you? Yeah, sure. So I'm a wedding photographer here in Melbourne, Australia, and I shoot weddings pre-COVID all over the world. Um, and I've been doing it since 2013. And since then, I've been doing a lot of education as well. So since 2015, I started my first workshop, and now I do a lot of online courses, um, talking at all the conferences, like way up north in Europe there and, um, you know, photo field trip in the US and like tons of different places. And yeah, I just keep myself busy um, shooting weddings and, and helping. Uh, I, I teach business. So I teach like sales and, and, you know, how to run a profitable and sustainable business for wedding photographers because I come from more of a business background and I love the aspect of like making business really creative, really fun and easy to understand to help photographers, um, you know, be in, in control and be empowered with those small, simple tips. So that's Excellent. Me. And that's perfect because I think that's what our audience loves to hear, not to speak on their behalf, but who doesn't <laughs> like business tips and learning how to better themselves in their business? So let's get So You said you, meant, you mentioned that you began in 2013 and you have kind of a business background, but I also read that you used to be uh, an electrician. So how did you get yeah. started with photography and, and how did that transition come about from electrician to professional wedding photographer? Yeah, so I've had a few different careers. Um, I finished school when I was 15 to become an electrician. And after that, I actually quit being an electrician and me and my now wife started a cafe and we ran that for a little while. Um, then after that, I went back to being an electrician and I started an electrical company. And then I got over that and then decided, you know what, I'm going to do wedding photography. So I was working over in, the West, in Western Australia in the mines and I didn't have that much to do and I just bought a camera and I started taking photos of everything. And I really loved it. And I think from there, I just, you know, you get that passion and you just want to make it work. So I used everything from my past business experiences to build up my um, career really fast. And, um, and yeah, it's been a really amazing, really fun, wild ride ever since. Okay. Yeah. I, I, want, I, want to jump, I want to jump into that when you were getting started from the business perspective. But before I do that, yeah, let's go to the photography side of it now. And, and how would you describe your style uh, that you have with your business? Uh, I'd say it's very modern romantic. Um, it is very, I, I guess it's, it is very expensive. It's very moody. It's very um, spontaneous. Like I, I think it's very like, you know, a lot of fleeting moments and I, and I love like the romance around photography. I shoot a lot of film as well. So um, I love film tangible coming from an electrical background I love being able to take photos with film and actually, you know, developing things and, and feeling things, printing stuff, like that kind of stuff to me, you know, create, creating image, imagery that has like real grain on it and stuff like that. It's just, it's hard to beat those type of things. So yeah, I'd say my style of wedding photography and I only really shoot weddings is modern romantic wedding photography. Okay. Modern romantic. Yeah. Very cool. I want to jump now to, or come back to what you mentioned, how you, 
you got a quick start when you first started with photography because of your mm -hmm. background. What are some things that you were doing at the beginning to help you really kind of hit the ground running? So when I first started um, becoming, I uh, became a wedding photographer. I decided I was going to become a full-time wedding photographer. And I remember I came home and I told my wife that, you know, I was quitting my job, going to be a full-time wedding photographer. I didn't know how to use my camera and I didn't know how to get bookings. I didn't have any bookings booked in, but I made the decision for myself that I was going to just jump straight in and become full-time. Uh, one of the hard things was when I first started is I was going out of wedding season and I needed to build my portfolio up as fast as possible. And there was just no work in Melbourne at the time. So I sold my car for $20,000. Um, I got rid of all of our stuff and I bought a ticket for me and my wife to go to America because it was summertime over there and wedding season was just starting. And I contacted every venue. I contacted um, other photographers for referrals, blogs, magazines, um, wedding planners, stylists, like everything. And I just put a shout out saying, I'll shoot weddings for free to sleep on your couch. And I did that for three months solid. And uh, I only booked about eight weddings and we traveled around, but they were amazing weddings on, you know, side of gorges and things like that. And when I came back to Australia for the wedding season, my stuff's been featured everywhere. It was all over Junebug weddings and Hellerman weddings. And I got featured by Rangefinder and um, I picked up a few sponsorships when I was over in the US as well. So when I finally came back to Australia to shoot my first season, I was already an international wedding photographer, published photographer. Um, and then within, I think, 18 months from that, I won Rangefinder Top 30 in the world for photography as well and uh, runner-up Australian photographer of the year from Capture Magazine. So I think within the first two years of my career, it kind of blew up really fast. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the word that really jumps to my head after you went through this commitment. You were so committed, Jay, right off the jump. You were like, I'm all in. You sold your car and you flew to America for yeah, those I sakes. Was, I was obsessed. You know, like, how do you, how do you make something happen? Like, I don't leave anything to chance. Um, and for me, like, I'd rather spend $20,000 building a portfolio and building a career compared to just hoping that I can, you know, book something or, or, you know, whatever it is. Absolutely. As Ola says, very brave indeed. And you touched upon you doing stuff for free. A lot of photographers, uh, they might hesitate to do something like that. But if you were to speak to kind of people starting out or maybe experiencing a slow moment, yeah. what would you say to them if they said, should I do this for free, Jay? Should I be working for free? Yeah, if, if it's um, in your favor, then do whatever it takes to get yourself wherever you want to go, right? So don't listen to the advice of photographers that will tell you, you know, don't undercut the market, don't shoot for free, you're ruining stuff because someone that's shooting for free and offering those services, they're not going to compete with me because it's a different market. Mm -hmm. um, and I just believe like when someone gives you that advice, like don't shoot for free, they're only giving you the advice that best serves them. And I don't believe it best serves you. So it's not in your interest, it's in their interest. And you really need to take on the advice for people that want to see you actually flourish, and become part of the community opposed to being competition. So I believe 100%, like if you want to go out there and shoot for free, if you want to go and sell your car, if you want to, you know, do whatever, if you want to go all in, like definitely do it. There's nothing stopping you. Well said. And it, is it important for people to make that, to be so black and white and, and so 100% committed when they make that decision? Or is it possible for people to kind of dip their toes in the water and slowly ease in? Like, how do you see it? I see it as like how committed you want to be is going to be directly re re um, related to your growth. So if you want to just like dip your toe in and you're not ready to commit, you're only going to get, you know, very average results um, yeah. because the decisions you make are going to be totally different. You won't invest in yourself. You won't get the best gear. You won't get the best albums. You won't um, take those chances. You won't shoot for free. You won't do all these things because you're only dipping in your toes. So mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I got you know, successful really fast is because I decided at the point that I was going to be a full-time wedding photographer before I had work. And I think if you go all in on, on whatever that you want to do and you get obsessed with it, then obviously you're going to make totally different decisions and things are going to be worth different to you. Oh, yeah. Now, how long were you, forgive me if you mentioned it, how long were you in America then? You went there and then you came back so to three Australia. Three months, like I was only allowed to go there for three months and I was there to the day three months. Three months. <laughs> yeah. And it completely changed your world around. You know, nobody yeah. knew you were in Australia, you go there and then you're like an international celebrity already. 
Yeah, so it was, um, I was, I hustled, you know, I went and met with, you know, tons of really good wedding photographers. I made lots of connections. I went to different, um, you know, like printing labs. I went to magazines. I went to blogs. I went and introduced myself to people. I went and networked all around the whole country. And that obviously got me in front of so many people because when I was ready to submit in my work, like people already knew who I was. And so this professional network, Mm-hmm. It, it, they really helped then to catapult your name to the status that you had by the time you went to Australia. And and, and what were some, what were some other things you were doing? Like this, you said this was around 2013. So this is the age of social media, right? Are yes. you just constantly updating, you know, your social media as you're doing work or, you know, I see it from the top. You got, you know, which talk about the importance of being in a professional network, right? But what are also some things that you were doing maybe on the ground level other than meeting with the people and building a professional network? Are you putting things out on social media? Are you like, what are some of those other things you're doing? One of the most important things with social media is we don't need to make polished content and it's really important to bring people on the journey. So me going overseas and doing all this kind of stuff, so many people gravitated to my social media because they were interested and they also seen that, you know, I was doing something that a lot of people wouldn't do Mm. and, you know, just getting people in on the journey. Yes, I wasn't a great photographer and I wasn't posting the most polished work and stuff like that. But I think when you, you know, don't even care about that kind of stuff and you're just putting work out there, like people really resonate with the story. And yeah, I was definitely posting wherever I could. We were doing whatever we could. Um, Me and my wife, we were cruising around and between weddings like i'd go to thrift stores we'd buy a wedding dress and i'd put it on her and would go out into the wilderness and we'd just take styled photos to make more portfolio like we were just doing whatever we could to to build up that career really fast yeah the commi- oh, there it is that commitment again man this is i <laughs> you know this is really i don't mean to sound patronizing but i'm just so impressed by this, this is like three months Jay. you're like i'm going to be a photographer and then in three months you're coming back to your home as an, like a celebrity this is unbelievable uh it, so it went, yeah, yeah. Sure a lot of the people listening uh agree and are curious to know how how this happened as lewis said you just really smashed it man you totally smashed it how how awesome anybody listening if you have any questions for jay please put them in the audience uh yeah, and we'll be happy to help you out and you you mentioned that you were tra- you got to america but you were traveling all over or were you kind of sticking out uh, you know on the west coast or the east coast or or how did that work then throughout those three months were you traveling all over the country yeah, I went everywhere. So we shot um, weddings in New Mexico, Arizona, um, Big Bear in California, Portland, um, Chicago, and New York. So we literally, and we used up all of our money and like, it wasn't easy. I'm telling you, like the last two weeks in the country, we had to do some wolfing, which is like worldwide organic farming, um, just so we had somewhere to stay because I couldn't afford, you know, both of us staying somewhere. Um, the US isn't that cheap you know transport in in inside the country like flying around isn't that cheap and yeah it was like it was a pretty big deal okay yeah i see a question from lewis and it's it's a nice one he wants to know if you had any experience in photography before you went into wedding photography oh no i was complete newbie i didn't know how to use my camera that was another thing so i like i was shooting in automatic and i had to work out really fast how to shoot photos right so what I did was and what's really interesting I used to be an electrician is I bought a whole lot of film cameras and I started shooting film and I'll take notes to see and that was how I fast track my photography like really fast because um, one you can't stuff up because it costs you a lot of money and you learn really quick like how to see light how to use light but also the fundamentals of photography work the same as the fundamentals of electricity which is really weird but when you learn electricity it's like a triangle which is very similar to like ISO shutter and aperture. And when I seen like how photography works, I was mind blown because I was like, that's just the same principles and it works the same way as like working out, you know, your voltage resistance and your power, which is a weird connection and not many people in the world know that, but yeah, it was just, it just worked for me. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I never would have thought to ask it, but (laughs) it's very interesting. (laughs) And I, I don't know, for me, I love how you have such a uh, background with electronics and electricity, but you are so also partial to the film and the tangible side of photography. I think that's great. Um, now, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to beat this, this topic to death, but you did not have any experience when you went to America. And, and so you went there and you're just asking these people along the way to try and help you, or you're just learning yourself. You're kind of in some books, you're just, just trial and error. Like how, 
again, you went from <laughs> you went from just starting to being international status in three months. So I, you must have been talking to some people, getting some pointers. And so, I guess yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was gonna say like I, like there was no pointers or anything, but like I think when you get obsessed with something, like that's like what you do, right? So right. I was shooting weddings, and the first wedding I ever shot, like with my wife, she came along. I've never been to a wedding. I left before the reception because I didn't know there was a reception at the wedding. I didn't know any wedding photographers. Like I literally yeah. went there, I shot some stuff, and then I was like, well, this is great. Um, they weren't paying me. So, you know, there wasn't those big expectations. And then from there, we just kept building and building and building. And I had to, I put myself in a situation where I had to learn mm -hmm. really fast because, you know, I was starting to get paid for this kind of stuff as well. Okay. Yeah. I see a question from Lewis. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I want to ask one more question on this topic. Uh, there must have been some growing pains. So what did oh, you do when you came to a point where you might have made a mistake or something didn't, didn't go the way you needed it to? How did you handle those kind of situations? Because that's something I think that a lot of photographers stress about, especially when they're beginning, is what do I do when I make a, when I make a mistake? You've obviously pushed through it. So can you just walk us through a time and when that happened and what you did to continue on? Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's not something that's on my radar. Like mistakes are not something on my radar. I make so many mistakes in life in general, but it's not something that um, like I ever dwell on or think about. Like I'm very good at problem solving. Like a yeah. problem to me is not a problem. I don't okay. get like anxiety about problems or anything. And I see problem as an opportunity because there's, if you have a problem, that means there has to be some way to fix it. And mm -hmm usually there's an opportunity in that like and that's how business works as well like if someone has a problem they need a wedding photographer great i've got a solution i am a wedding photographer and then so that's kind of like the connection with problems like being at weddings and things like that like i definitely uh started off you know had no money so i had some really terrible gear to work with so i was using like a a big long um lens and a fisheye lens so I had to get really close to people or I had to try and hang out the window to try and take photos. So there was a lot of things that made it really hard. But at the same time, like some of the first weddings that I ever shot are still on Junebug weddings and they still, I still see them all over the place on Pinterest and stuff. And they were using, you know, subpar gear. And it just goes to show like when you're out there ready to do it, like there's no, there's no excuses. You, you don't have to have excuses. Yeah. And that, you know, that's the perfect mentality to have too, is the fact that you don't even remember your mistakes is, is great. And number two, you say how you see any mistake as a potential opportunity. Like how, if you go on with that attitude, that that's only going to lead to to good things. And it also, you know, it also plays to, you mentioned it before, how it's about the story that you're, you're capturing with the image more so than any equipment that you're using totally. or specific technique. And that, you know, that, that's great. Um, well, you were talking about lenses and uh, I saw a question from Ola in the audience and then we'll go back to Lewis's question. Yeah. What is your favorite wedding lens now? Do you have a favorite? I, I do. I love, uh, I actually love the 24 mil. So I have been using Canon gear like most of my career. I've only just switched to Sony and I just bought the Sony 24 mil and um, I just love how close it is, how wide it is. And I love getting in close and um, I'm very close photographer, so I love like that kind of perspective, I guess. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And how many weddings uh, do you cover a year, roughly? Uh, uh, so right that. now, I cover between uh, forty and fifty weddings per year. Well, I have since since 2013. I've been doing about that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Please be sure to let us know uh, in the audience. Uh, we'd be happy to field them again. I have I have some questions, but. Hey, if I see some in the audience from you, I'll take the time to to address them, of course. Um, so again, you also stress how much you like the uh, tangible side of photography. You like the film and you like also the printing. And we want to talk now about the business. I'm going to get kind of to here and now and just talk about the business side of it. Yeah, let's do it. And how can using some kind of tangible print products really help a photographer develop their business? Well, look, one of the things is, you know, we as photographers or as creatives, we hate we hate selling. Mm -hmm. um, are you still there, Eugene? I'm here. Do you hear me? Yeah, it's just your screen's like frozen. Um, oh, so, so, so what, like, there's a little bit of a disconnect, right? So, we hate selling, but people love buying. And we know this because, you know, credit card debt is through the roof. Um, people love like shopping, they love doing all this kind of stuff. 
But as creators, we think like no one wants to buy or people want discounts or people won't pay what we're worth and all this kind of stuff. But that's us like living in our own heads. And truth be told, we're doing our businesses and our clients an injustice by not having products for them to sell, right? Because think about if I went to buy this shirt, I would love to go into the shop that sells this shirt and I'd love to have choice. I don't want to just buy the one shirt. How cool would it be if they sold some headphones and they sold some shoes and some jeans? that went with that shirt. And I think it's the same with wedding photography. So many people come to me and go, our photographer didn't have albums and you have amazing albums. Or I'm going to hire you because the, no one else had albums. And I think, you know, you're not best serving your clients by creating products for them to go shopping. And people love shopping. They love the power of choice. So with um, all your packages and things like that, you must have, yeah, must have more than one package because if you don't, you're taking the power away from your client. So I always have three packages, one, two, and three, and then I have different things they can add on there. So then they can go shopping and then they feel empowered when they're coming to me and they can see the services that they want, but also the stuff that they didn't even know they wanted. And then they can add those things on and it's a great experience. So you're better serving your clients by offering them those things, which is in turn is going to help your business become sustainable because if you're working all summer long and you know you can't shoot weddings during winter which is a lot of the times you know here or during covid um i right now just like have a mailing list and i'll send out a big um album special to my mailing list from everyone from the last since 2013 and i can make some good money whilst people are sitting at home and they've got you know not that much to do and i think these type of things is something that can really make your business sustainable because you can not only try and get new leads and hustle and try and get um, followers and shoot for free and do all this kind of stuff, you can also nurture the clients that you already have, that database, and you can make a lot more income from doing that. Absolutely. I want to mention too that uh, through us at Photo, we offer a wide variety of product mockups that will allow you to do just as Jay suggests, and that is to target clients that you already have or maybe some new ones. But what's great is with those clients that you do have, you have some of their photos uh, on your hard drive already. So you can simply put them into some of our product mockups, be it for a complete album set or a wall decor product, and send them an offer. Uh, as Jay says, when you're awesome. in a low time like this, that's something that you can do and it works. We've had many photographers reach out to us and let us know that that kind of strategy is very effective, especially in these down times uh, as well. Jay, you mentioned that you have three packages. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some things that you include uh, in these packages? So personally, like my biggest package has like a second photographer. There's a little bit more time. I have an mm -hmm. album in there and I always throw in some prints as well. And then my smaller packages will just be just more, more so just my time, no albums or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and and then I'll have like an even smaller package, which is I call it keep it simple. And it's like mm -hmm. more of a simple wedding. I, do, I shoot a lot of trendy Melbourne weddings where it's just in a bar or something like that. And, um, oh, okay. you know, it, it's like 30 people to 50 people and uh, they don't need, you know, the big opulent packages with, with albums and things like that. But you got to remember too, like if people are having smaller weddings, especially elopements and weddings during COVID, like it doesn't mean they, they want to have less of a wedding and spend less money. So it's really important to make sure that even if they're having a four hour wedding or a smaller wedding, that you still offer them albums, you still offer them the service like you would if they were going to spend $10,000 with you. So I think mm. that kind of stuff is like very important to remember. Yeah. I want to just say something too, like from the perspective of a wedding client, you know, you got to pay for people at a reception, right? So this idea that just because you don't have the big wedding doesn't mean you don't want to spend money. Maybe even the opposite, like a couple might've walked in with the a number they had in their head. Now suddenly they don't have to invite 50 people and they might feel like they have a little, a little more money that they can, you know, put onto something else like a print product or something. So of that's course, right. that's a really good point is what I want to say. It's a really good point, Jay, that just because they want a smaller wedding or they have to have a smaller COVID style wedding doesn't mean that they don't want to spend uh, as much money as they might want to otherwise. Uh, some few, a few people have come in. Hi, Erica. Hello, Carla. Again, okay. of course, want to keep saying, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the audience. I also want to mention at the top of the comments section, there is a link to some courses offered by Jay Long. As you can tell, he's definitely somebody you want to listen to. I, I think I'm going to start becoming a wedding photographer <laughs> just so I can listen to your courses, Jay. Uh, I love your point of view. I love your perspective. And uh, so we talked about your albums. You offer three. Now, what are some of these other products that you then offer to your clients to allow them to, to kind of build up and to, to 
buy more. As you had mentioned before, that you'd like to offer packages, but also give people the opportunity to buy more and for you as the photographer to upsell. So what are some other products? You mentioned that you offer prints and you offer albums. Do you do some uh, kind of wall decor or anything else, or it's just a variety of that? I, I, I keep it pretty simple. So I do prints, I do albums. I have a photo booth business. I've got a DJ business. So we also mm -hmm. offer those in mm -hmm. the upsells as well. Um, okay. I offer pre-wedding shoots and I offer engagement shoots. Um, and then second photographers and videographer as well. So there's probably like 10 things uh, that people can come and they can like start choosing what they want. Um, like doing stuff like that, it just means like you're – making more income from less amount of people, which means you don't have to hustle as much, which means you don't need the big Instagram following, which means like there's so much knock on effect because a lot of us think like we need to make sure that we're shooting 40 weddings, but you can make the same amount if you shoot 25, if you do it right, if you set your business up right. So I think just those things, it's just food for thought. It's important to think about. Okay. A lot of, I think a lot of, well, not a lot. I think photographers today, though, they might hesitate with an album or a print product because they feel like their clients only want to have these digital solutions nowadays. Uh, what is it in your mind that makes clients still want to crave, like the clients of photographers, that makes them still want to have an album? Or what can the photographer do to kind of remind them and show them that, hey, you, you want an album. This is, this is what you want. Uh, people don't know what they want. And then they don't know what they want until you show them something and then, you know, then they want it. So it's really important. Like I have a studio and I have albums specifically like sample albums for each different type of wedding. So I've got ones for vineyards, cities, um, you know, country wedding, DIY wedding. And I always bring the albums over and I show the couples like this is an album similar to your wedding. Um, have a look at this. And I never sell albums. They sell themselves. So I don't show anything digital in my studio. I don't have, you know, digital slideshows or a laptop or a computer or an iPad. Everything's tangible. So I'll have my tangible price guides. I'll have um, my albums, all that kind of stuff. And they pick up the albums and they look through them as I'm speaking with them. And then they ask me about the albums. And then I talk about the benefits. Like it's easy to, easy to design. And, you know, your family going to love this for years to come. And so and so and so and then at the end they'll say yes we want to book you plus we want one of these albums that probably happens like i probably sell like 70 percent um 70 percent of my, my clients i would say buy albums which is a high percentage yeah do you have any kind of digital option or you only have the printed tangible products oh no they also get digital and all that kind of stuff as well of course okay okay yeah yeah and um, so, yeah, there you go. You just explain it to them. You just educate them. Now, if you if you want to be offering products to, you know, your consumer base, do you think it's important to uh, advertise that as well? I mean, all photographers know that they have to put their pictures on social media and, and their website and things like this. But what about products? Like if you're somebody like yourself who offers printed products, mm -hmm. do you believe it's important to show that on you know, social media or, or your website? <laughs> yeah, I, I think if you keep them a secret, I don't reckon anyone's going to buy them. Um, so like if you're out there now and you're thinking like, should I take some photos of my albums and things like that? Like I tell you what, in our studio, every album that comes through the door, we take photos of it. We send the, the clients photos and say like, your album looks amazing. Just have a look at it. Put it on my social media. I put it on my mailing list. I put it on the blog. I put it on my website. You know, I send it to album manufacturers. I do, I do so many, make sure I put it on Pinterest, stuff like that. So, um, no one will buy unless you show them what you have. And it's so important to show the value because that will create desire around your services. I get people literally booking me because they're like, Jai, we love the albums that you have. So, you know, we just see how passionate you are and, and things like that. So that's why we've come to, come to you compared to everybody else that, do, that doesn't have albums. They do. They just keep it a secret. So really important like if you want to if you like just remember people don't know what you have they don't know if you're a wedding photographer where you're based they don't know that you have albums things like that until you always have to educate your clients okay so there again not only your photo as professional photographers if you want to sell print products you need to show them and market them which can come back to some things like our our uh, mock-ups and other marketing images. And because if you want to show off print products as a professional photographer, they don't have to be some extravagant professionally uh, made photos. Do they can, can you just kind of quickly take pictures or do you recommend making some kind of big, um, you know, elaborate scene with your, with your print product pictures that you're trying to make? 
I, I think it comes down to your brand and, and your price point and things like that. Like, obviously, don't overcomplicate things and make making everything perfect all the time. Like, there's nothing better than just getting it out there. And, you know, with Instagram Reels now, with um, Insta Stories, with IGTV, with, with a phone, with an amazing thing on here, like, you can literally film something up, get it out there, and then you might have another sale. So don't hold yourself back with thinking things got to be perfect, got to have perfect studio lighting, got to have perfect props and things like that. Like it really doesn't make the big impact. That's what you're going to be thinking. Okay. I see a question from Linda in the audience, and, and we've done a lot of talk about albums. She wants to know if you have wall art in your studio. I do. I've got some like um, – I've got some like really nice pieces that I just, I know kind of portrays my style when they walk in, it, it looks nice and grand. And um, I think it, I think it helps sell my services for sure. Okay. Is it, when you talk about wall decor, is this something you recommend maybe like a bigger size or does that come down to brand and style? Um, wall decor in terms of sizing, should it be bigger or is that not necessarily a rule of thumb? I don't think it's a rule of thumb. I think um, it comes down to your own style. Um, I think mine are like fairly nice and large and because they're in a studio as well, a lot of people don't want to have gigantic photos of their own wedding um, in their houses. Like, let's be honest. And I think a lot of people like to keep it like nice and small and modest and, you know, in the hallway and things like that. But also remember like different images are worth different you know, di different sentimental value to the couple. So a lot of the times they don't want to see photos of just themselves on a wall, but imagine a group photo and like having that down the hallway or something because you can walk down the hallway and stop and you can see all your friends there or having those family photos like grandpa or something like that and, you know, putting more emphasis on having those compared to just those epic wedding shots that we like to show because we're photographers and that's our craft. So just understanding understanding like what people actually want. Okay. Now that's a good segue to my next question from the audience. I got to do my job. I see there's a lot of questions I missed. <laughs> a lot of good ones too. Carolina, or Carolyn, sorry. Carolyn asked, do you pick the photos for the albums or do you let your clients pick them? So I always pick uh, the photos for the albums and then I allow them have three rounds of changes to change up those albums. I do that because if you allow your clients to, to choose the photos, it just never happens. And the you gotta remember like, you know, the problem, the pain point, you gotta be the solution all the time. So the solution is, hey guys, don't worry about it. I will sit here on a Friday night and design these albums for you. And then you have something to work off and you can make changes from that. So whatever you're doing, just make sure that you're the solution, making things easy for your clients. Like you wanna get rid of any kind of pain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good question, Carolyn. Uh, I'm going to go down to Ola now. She asks, she wants to know if you use Photoshop or Lightroom much. Yeah, I, I use them both very much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, use, I use Lightroom more so. It's um, Lightroom is very easy for like batch editing and, and doing more volume work. And I do a lot of nitpicking on Photoshop and I love how you can use Photoshop really well with tones. Um, sharpening things like that, especially for those images that are going to be in albums as well. Okay. And when you come away from a wedding, you know, right when you finish, about how many pictures do you usually have? And then, like, how much do you then narrow it down to and edit to show to to client base? So I usually have on an average day about two and a half thousand photos, and I usually deliver between five hundred and seven hundred photos. Okay. And how long does it usually take you to kind of go through that culling process? Uh, culling takes probably 45 minutes. Um, and then it probably takes, uh, I'd say a good day, like seven, seven hours to edit. Okay. Edit a wedding. And uh, uh, Lewis wants to know. Oh, sorry, Lewis just asked if um, I outsource editing. I actually have a full-time editor that works in-house. Um, so I do do that, yeah, because it's it's just – too much like i shoot 40 50 weddings plus all my education plus i, ha I host a podcast plus I, you know i do so many things so it's really important um with, with your time and business you've got to weigh up like what's more important sitting there editing or or like getting yourself out there and taking photos of albums and things like that making more sales making more income for your business so you re really and if you want to scale it up as well from you know 100 200 300 up to 500,000 per year, like you've got to start outsourcing things so you have more time in your business. 
you're helping us, uh, our professional for wedding photographers, be better with their business. So how much would you recommend considering photographers to consider getting an assistant? I know a lot of times photographers might feel reluctant to, um, oh my God, the words just gave me, to uh, give, give off, a t- what's that word? To give off a task to somebody else, especially something like editing. But how important and beneficial is it from a business perspective to have somebody there to help you uh, to take on some of the duties and some of the tasks? Delegate, that's the word I was looking for. It is so important. Um, I think as creative entrepreneurs, we hold ourselves back so much because we believe we're the best and no one can do what we do. So we think like no one can edit as good as me and no one can take photos as good as me and no one can write emails as good as me or no one can post on Instagram as good as me. And we do that. And like it's a very kind of like selfish thing to even think. Um, it's, it's, it's just like we don't have the right skill set to show someone or teach someone. And I think that's really important because – What happens is if you're just doing everything yourself, like you only have one mind, one solution, one everything. But the second you have two people or three people, you become a superpower because you have more people to bounce around ideas. You can grow so much more. You can use other people's time. You use other people's talents. Like um, it's, you know, it's the ceiling. Like if you, if you believe that you can't outsource your editing because you're the best at it, like that's your ceiling and you can see that straight away. So if you want to break that ceiling, and move your business up, like, yes, you're going to have to work your way through letting go of some of some things and also um, managing people as well, you know, managing those expectations and, and teaching people how to do it as good as you. Yeah. And one thing that's important to remember, I was speaking with somebody else, just because you have an assistant doesn't mean it has to be paid for labor. Maybe there are ways that you can, you know, for example, if you're in the US, like an intern or something like this, so uh, it doesn't have to be paid or it doesn't have to be a crazy amount either. So Jay is talking on the benefits of potentially having some assistant or somebody to help you. And I think that's very valuable advice. I want to just say again, a lot of you, a lot of good questions that are coming into the uh, comment section. Feel free to keep adding them. If you feel like your question was not addressed by me, just please post it in again. It might have gotten buried at this point. But please keep your questions coming, audience. They're all great, great questions. Uh, Lewis agrees there's nothing wrong with outsourcing whatsoever. He's thinking of doing it himself. Uh, Jay sounds like he would recommend that. Uh, Uh, has a question. Sorry, do you want to speak on that? Oh, no, I I think I think absolutely. If you want to, you know, change your business and um, and, you know, level it up, like try it out for sure. Now, you also have a podcast, Jay, and Miha wants to know what what made you want to start that podcast yeah so the podcast is um it's like for creative entrepreneurs and mostly for wedding photographers so i have a lot of uh industry experts on my podcast every single week and we talk about upsells and albums and things that you can do like practical things you know right now um i did it because there's so many wedding photographers that just weren't that great at business and there were so many simple easy things that they can do to change their mindset so it's a lot to do with like mindset training and things like that and um, there's just no better way than like, you know, lifting up all the boats and allowing like all the tide to come up because it strengthens the industry. And I think there's nothing that makes me happy than seeing everyone around me thrive. So the more that I can throw my passion around and help people's businesses get better and better and better, the more my business grows as well. And I know this because I've been teaching workshops to all my direct competitors for the last five years and directly you know, boosting their sales, helping them make 100,000, 200,000 and like making the whole industry so much better. And the podcast is a perfect outlet like that. That's very noble of you. A lot of people would shy away from their direct competitors, especially, but you are willing to help them. And that, that's so wonderful. So wonderful to hear. Where can people find uh, your podcast? Uh, so podcast is everywhere and it's called Make Your Break. So it's on Apple Podcast app. It's on Spotify, but if you just jump in, make your break or type in Jai Long, which is written right there, um, and then have a listen because there's some really good stuff there. And if you want to learn how to sell more albums, things like that, like everything's there. Excellent. And as I mentioned before, at the top of the chat, we have a link to Jay's courses that you can get yourself involved with. Uh, one particularly he calls the Album Academy and another called Masterclass, all about prints. Those particularly are for free. So if you just scroll up to the very top of the comments section, you will find that link to Jay's website and his courses subpage. So you can keep learning the knowledge from Jay, who is so happy to help everybody in the industry, which is such a wonderful attitude 
to have. I really appreciate that attitude of the rising tide lifts all boats. Um, <laughs> I want to come back to social media for a minute. We've kind of touched on it lightly and a little yeah. like offhandedly. <laughs> this is a very loaded question, but let's just get it out there. What is the secret? Is there a secret to uh, uplifting a wedding photography business with social media? Does it come down to a certain post count or different types of posts or, or things like this? What do you see to be effective for wedding photographers when it comes to social media and social media advertising? Uh, there's lots of secrets. Um, what, what secret can I go down? So, I mean, one thing is I've built a lot of Instagram accounts. So I have like five Instagram accounts. Um, and a lot of them have, I think one's got uh, 50,000 followers, 40,000 followers, 80,000 followers, 20,000 followers. Um, so I've done it lots of times with like lots of different secrets. But here's the secret, right? You, whatever platform that you are publishing on, you need to be passionate about it. You need to love it. So if you're just like, I don't have time for Instagram and I hate writing a caption and I hate posting something and I hate writing to people, then you shouldn't be on that platform or you need to change the way you see that platform. So social media is basically all it is. It's just a connection between you and your audience or you and your client or you and your fans. So you need to show up and you need to, you know, do that. And you need to become a leader because without a leader, there's no such thing as a follower. And if you want followers, you need to be a leader, right? Um, and to be a leader, like you need to do a lot of different things. Like you need to in inspire people. You need to evoke some sort of emotion or evoke an action. And that could be a like or a follow or like whatever that is. But like one of the secrets is people post really boring content and then they expect something from it, right? So I want to ask you right now, if you've been on Instagram for a long time and you haven't got any traction, like I want to ask you, like, would you like your last post? Would your last... Instagram caption evoke, you know, a comment from you? Like, would it, would it drive you to some sort of action? Would you save it? Would you like it? Would you share it? Like, what would you do? And a lot of the times we just like post a photo and say like, nice couple got married on the weekend. Of course, I'm just going to scroll past that and no one's going to, you know, like that. So make sure you're not posting really boring content. Make sure like it's good enough for you to actually like that post yourself. And when you can do that and you can just keep showing up, um, you're going you're to grow a following because people will be interested in what you're doing. They're going to see your passion. They're going to see your drive and they're going to be inspired by what you do. Do you like your last social media post? That's very powerful. Self-reflection is very important. It's very important. Uh, do you think you talked a lot about Instagram and stuff? Is there any kind of... Um, benefit uh, what am i trying to say facebook instagram there are so many social media platforms nowadays is any one more important than the other or do photographers particularly wedding photographers need to address all of them we know about facebook and instagram is there something else that wedding photographers need to make sure they don't miss out on yeah um here's one of the things like the way that advertising works not advertising marketing works because mm -hmm. um, we're not really talking about advertising like the way that marketing works is if you can get your voice heard in whatever platform that you're on then you're going to be on a winner but if you can't then you're just adding to the noise right mm -hmm. so if everyone's on instagram and they're all posting 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 then chances are you probably won't get that much work if you're just sitting there posting on instagram over and over and over because there's also another trillion people on Instagram. So when I started Instagram, I realized no one was on Instagram. So I was posting on there all the time. And then I got, you know, lots of followers and I got lots of work. But now everyone's fighting over the Instagram space. So I just go and go to the venues, shake my hands, and I do it old school. So I just go back to what did people do before Instagram? They actually like had real connections. And now because no one goes and puts albums in venues, no one goes and has handshakes and takes people out to dinner and has lunch and, and like rings up and has a conversation, it means I'm the only person in the space and it means I can dominate that space and I can book out a year's worth of work. So that is one thing. And then there's other platforms. There's, you know, you've got Pinterest, which is super undervalued and, you know, you can get your work on Pinterest. Well, and Pinterest is, is a lot better than um, Instagram because it continues to give you leads to your website it's the same as google and it's the same as youtube youtube is really underrated or underused for wedding photographers for their clients but there's no reason why you couldn't have a youtube channel and really show up and show people how to organize their wedding how to get the best photos how to 
organize their family photos, how to, you know, get amazing photos and different types of sun if you're in Poland or something like that and it's raining. Like there's so many things you could do there. But what's amazing about YouTube, it's owned by Google, which means you can Google that content and you'll start ranking in that content. You can reuse it, put it on Instagram for IGTV and you can embed it into your blog as well. So there's so many ways you can repurpose something like that. So just thinking about like where is everybody not and just be there. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, well, that's a good point. And how it's coming full circle, right? How now you want to be uh, in touch and doing all those old-fashioned ways of social interaction yeah. as much as you can in this day and age, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I want to jump back, Jay. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of, I don't know how to segue, but we're going to jump back, kind of a ugly transition, to selling and kind of product and, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and I want to talk about that upselling because you you mentioned how you like to do that. You like to have your three products, or sorry, mm -hmm. your three packages, but allow people to you know come and choose more as they wish or something. Are there any things that any things any things sorry that you do in particular to help to uh, generate some upsells, some upsells maybe with an album or to get people to buy a second product or a third product? What are some things that you can tell to other professional wedding photographers on how to effectively upsell? their clients and not make it seem like some dirty sales trick. Well, <clears throat> there is so many different um, things that you can do and it depends on your business model. So if you are like a, from a zero to a hundred thousand dollar wedding photographer, or if you're like a 400 to $500,000 wedding photographer, there's like different things that you'll do. So if you're like a, from a four to 500,000 wedding, uh, wedding photographer per year, you'd want to be optimizing everything. And that means you will want to have a really good cart that allows upsells, that allows like videos for upsells to show things, that allows um, order bumps, cross sells, like things like that. Those things like wedding photographers don't really know because there's not many wedding photographers that kind of have, you know, a half a million dollar a year income. So that's one way. And then the other way is like more old school, like showing um, showing more links. So you could you could just have a whole website about your albums or about your products. And when you're doing your emails, you have links to those. Having a really good price guide and having really big write-ups about them. A lot, of, a lot to do is uh, with, with selling stuff. It's all about copy. So having really good copywriting um, and showing the value, showing a desire, showing a transformation in what the product is and what it can do for them and how they need that product, how it's going to change their life, um, whatever it is. And then with that, like you will never have to sell because things just sell themselves. So it depends on like where you are. And the reason why I say that is because um, programs where it automates upsells and cross sells and order bumps and stuff are going to cost a lot more money per month. I know, I don't know why, but a lot of wedding photographers don't like to spend money on anything. So because they have that mindset, they won't grow to the 500,000 because they, they won't do those type of things. And if you're in that genre, you know, if you're in that class of people with their business, then down here, it's going to, if you're not going to spend the money, you have to spend the time. That means you're going to do more time, doing more blog posts, doing more like emails, doing more EDMs, like things mm -hmm. like that, if that makes sense. So you're still going to spend something. It depends if it's right. money or time. And yeah. Yeah. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. And some, a lot of times time is more valuable than money, right? And, and well, thinking of it is... There's a yeah. point. Like <laughs> right now, um, I, I would say money is more valuable than time because, you know, I'm in COVID and yeah. so I've got lots of time and then no money. And then <laughs> sometimes people have like lots of money and no time when they're shooting lots of weddings. So, you yeah. know, it always like whatever decision you do in your business, you got to weigh up like what something's worth to you in terms of like, would you outsource that those photos because time is worth way more than money? Um, and when you first start, you wouldn't do that. But when, once you start right. scaling your business up, you definitely want to be doing that. Yeah. Yeah, and just remembering, you know, sometimes uh, the investment is just that. That a lot, I think, a lot of times for everybody, it's human nature. We think we spend money. Oh no, there it goes. But if it's an investment, if it's in some kind of educational platform, or if it's in mm -hmm. again outsourcing to a, a skilled professional to help you, that's an investment that, in the long run, is going to actually allow you to make more money at the end of it. Absolutely. Uh, so I think that's it's very wise. And again, go up to the top of the chat to find the link to Jay's courses where he has one all about pricing. Uh, or we will help to, to talk to you about pricing and things like this for free masterclass about pricing. 
Um, but the, that's that's great. That's great advice, Jay. Uh, I kind of lost my train of thought a little bit. If, if you have any questions in the audience, please drop them in. I want to come here now, though, because unfortunately, some parts of the world are starting to be more restricted uh, mm -hmm. due to COVID and things like this. So what are some things that, that photographers can do or, you know, in, in the UK and in the, the US, in any case, the wedding photography, uh, wedding season is kind of dwindling down if there was one. So what are some things that the professional wedding photographers can do in this kind of downtime to continue to propel uh, their business? There's been no better time to grow your business than right now. Like you have more time than you have anything else. And for myself, like I've been doubling down. Um, I think I've read more books than I've ever read. I'm signing up to more online courses than I've ever done. And I think it's so important to grow <clears throat> your business. When other people are scaling back, that's when you need to like actually expand. And, it, and it's so important because think about this. So many wedding photographers, um, when when the going was good, they all say like, the market's oversaturated. There's too many wedding photographers, right? And now there's way less wedding photographers. I don't know about, you know, there in Poland, but in Australia here, there's, there's so many people closing up shop. There's so many people giving up. There's so many people just, you know, watching Netflix and that's it, which means there is no more problem of an oversaturated market. It's an open field. And if you're just starting, it means more established photographers are going to go out of business. There's more openings for you, more opportunities. And so you need to make that decision that you want to be a full-time wedding photographer. And if I was you, I'd be getting into some of these courses and actually doubling down on the one thing that you know is going to pay you back is, and that's yourself. Because when you learn these skills on how to sell albums and, and, you know, scale a business and all this kind of stuff, you can do it. And it doesn't matter what is going on, on the outside. It doesn't matter right now if there's a recession or, you know, COVID or anything like that. Like if you've got these skills, you're going to see the problem, you're going to find that solution and you're going to be able to make an income. Wonderful. Up at the top, J Law on courses. Check it out. <laughs> and I remember what I wanted to mention when you were talking about the upselling techniques. And you, again, you kept iterating how important it is to share with your clients the value of the product that you're trying to sell. And I think that's a very big thing not to forget, especially to our audience of professional wedding photographers, their clients often, this will be their first experience with professional print products. And I can speak even from my perspective. Um, it wasn't long ago when I came to work at this industry in this company and I, I had no prior experience with this industry. And at the time that I came, it was around a time when, you know, I was thinking about weddings and marriage and stuff like that. But bef before that, if you would have said wedding album, I would have thought of the old fashioned, you know, self mounted slip in the photos, like to the point where when I really found out what we made here for the first time, I was like, whoa, this is a. So I'm just trying to say that I think a lot of times the client base isn't so much aware of exactly what you're trying to offer. So that goes back to the importance of showing them uh, on social media and stuff like that. And then again, explaining every step of the way of like why this is why this is better than just that old fashioned self mount photo album <laughs> and, and all this other stuff like that too. So hey, I can I give you an example? Yeah, please. <clears throat> so I was at a cafe um, not too long ago and um, they were always like, this is just at the front. They've always got like this big pile of muffins and they're really nice looking muffins, right? Mm. And they, every afternoon they never sell. Mm. And one day, like I got talking to them and they asked me if I wanted a muffin. I was like, no, not really. Um, and then they're like, are you sure? Because they're organic, they're vegan, they're my mom's recipe. Like we make them mm. fresh every day. Mm. And I was like, what? Like for mm. starters, I'm vegan. So I wouldn't have bought it because I didn't know they were vegan. Yeah. But second of all, they looked too good. They looked like they were made in a factory. So I just assumed that they were full of chemicals and they're just not something I wanted. I didn't know that they were like organic and vegan and all this kind of stuff. And I said to them, you know, if you just put a sign on those muffins and said organic, vegan, mum's recipe, freshly baked every day muffins, I bet you they sell every day. And then they did that and they sold out. But it comes down to like we assume people know the product that we have or what we're offering. But really, you have to put a sign on it and say, like, this is a new age album. This is the print. This is this is what we have. This is what I offer. This is the wedding photography I have. Show people. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good example. I, I want to throw one more thing out there, too. And that is a kind of similar idea is not to get trapped in, in your world because this can happen, too. Uh, I actually was uh, went to university to be a teacher. And so I was always observing teaching teachers. And I, and I realized this when I was going through these courses and there, there was a teacher I had in high school 
And they would always tell you when you were teaching, like, oh, it's not to be an encyclopedia. It doesn't make you the best teacher. But how you communicate that to your students is what makes you a good teacher. And it made me think back to a teacher I had in high school. So, you know, when I was like 16. And this, this was a guy for physics. And he used to teach at a college, too. But he would talk to us like physics 101, like first time we have like we were one of his college students. And my point is, is he's going and he's talking with his professor colleagues. And then he goes to talk to the college students that he doesn't even know what we don't know. Like he kind of forgets that we don't know these basic, basic things. So you don't want to go condescending on your clients. But again, there's a lot of stuff that they probably don't know that for you might seem so basic that you mm. don't really even think to tell them or to show them. Absolutely. So it's, really, it's a really important thing to 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 look into uh, to help to help your business. But that was that was a really great example about the muffins. I really, I really like that one. Uh, any final questions uh, from the audience? Let me know. Uh, I'll, we're going to kind of do a last call for questions here with Jay Long. It's been such a wonderful day. I got one more question for you before Absolutely. we leave to kind of let people maybe trickulate a few more questions in. And that is, uh, we've been through so much today. It was such a wonderful talk. But what is the kind of one piece of advice that you kind of got or read or just you have even organically yourself that you want to give out to our audience of professional photographers? Oh, man. Okay. <clears throat> Let me think about it. Um, oh, there's so many. There's so many pieces. That's the only problem. So, Okay. I guess well, one, one just like small piece of advice is um, when you, um, well, for your website, right, if you mm. have a website, a lot, of, a lot of the times we like to put like our about page and talk about ourselves and how good we are and the awards that we won and the magazines that we're in. But people don't buy until they know that you understand them and that you care about them. And I think like, you know, when it comes to sales and things, like we like to go like, hey, buy my album. Hey, buy my products. Hey, buy this. People don't buy off that. Like people come to their own conclusion to buy. The same as like your wedding photography. So it's backwards to think that we can just put offers out there and think that people are going to buy our stuff for like whatever. Um, it's really important to understand, you know, the problems of our clients or where they're at right now. Like how hard is it to book a wedding photographer? How hard is it to find someone that offers albums? How hard is it to organize a wedding during COVID? Like there's so many reasons when someone's like gets in touch with you or if they're on their website, like what they're going through. And so make sure that not everything's just about you. It's you've got to be about your clients, your customers, your fans, like the people that love what you do. So that's just like one piece of advice, like when you're thinking about your price guide, you're thinking about your upsells, your copy, you're thinking about your, your Instagram posts, instead of saying like me, me, I, I, I shot this, I shot that, talk about the subjects, talk about the people in it, talk about, you know, the love there, talk about the transformation, like how they overcome some sort of adversity because it was hard to organize a wedding during COVID and they did it and it was incredible and so on and so forth. Yeah. I'll do it for you, Jay. I'll talk about you. Jay Long, everybody joining us from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you very much, Jay. Up on the top of the chat, jaylong.co forward slash courses. Check it out, our audience. I highly, highly right. recommend we have all of his social media links in the description of this event. Check him out. He really is a fantastic. Yeah, jump, jump over to my podcast. Um, lots of good stuff going on there. And it's in, I think it's, we're getting almost to the top 3% in the world. Most listened to podcasts. So it's, it's going places. Got to get on there. Yeah. Make the break. It was make the, make your break, make your break, make your break. Check it out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned with Nphoto as we have, we'll have more great content coming your way every day. Bye-bye now. Take care.